Hi, Christo. Welcome to the Good City Show. Hi, yeah. How are you? I'm good. How Thank are you. you? It's good yeah, to yeah, have you here good. on the Good City. Thank you very much. Um, so, Christo, yes, let's go. Um, so, Christo, you've been up to a lot of interesting stuff. Give me a little intro into who are you as an individual and then professionally. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Christo Joseph. Um, I work for Garden City University as the director for strategy and planning. Um, I am a part of the board of management in the university. I'm also a research scholar at Lancaster University in the higher education department, and a fellow of the Royal Society. So I'm uh, basically someone who's always submerged himself in higher education. All right. That's that's pretty much about me. That's about you professionally, and who are you as an individual? Oh, as an individual, I'm Christo. I'm a fun-loving, uh, easy-going, uh, tough master in one way. I like to get into the nitty-gritties, and uh, I have uh, good friends as Aditya, who allow me to come on live. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. So, Christo, you know, we have a very interesting topic today, where we're talking about yeah. the overall education sector and how this, how education is being affected all around the world, and especially here in Bangalore and India. Uh, what's your take on you know on how traditional education has taken a hit? Everybody has been forced to either go on holiday or switch online and start taking classes, virtual exams. I never, I don't know how a virtual exam works i have uh, but yeah and then that's one point of it and two going virtual has its own um, pain points because students are suddenly distracted you don't know if students are playing pubg or a game or actually learning online so what's your take on it um so so let me take it one by one so your first question on uh, the current situation um so these this is completely you know unprecedented and nothing that uh, we had anyone for the matter of fact had uh, thought to even happen so but with that being said it's also a wake up call to a lot of educational institutions uh, to look at alternative modes other than the traditional uh, ways of education that we right. are all used to uh, brick and mortar going to university etc um so when uh, i think it was march 24 uh, when uh, modi had announced that the lockdown is going to start i think way before that um, at least for garden city university we had uh, we had suspended all classes that was happening we had requested all students uh, to either head back home and we started off with uh, online classes which uh, i think uh, most institutions in india have also already, already started um but the challenge here is that you know with all these online classes that are happening um and all the technological tools that we're using either zoom or meet or uh, any other technology it was not meant for educational purpose it was meant for meetings it was meant for conversations uh but that's that changes uh, when it comes to academics um and students uh, especially when they come online to uh, classes like meet so who uh, you know teams microsoft teams etc these uh, these online platforms uh, it kind of becomes monotonous and people do and the feedback or that environment which the teacher used to look the look the student in the eye and could get to know what the student is thinking those things have uh, literally Uh, gone out of uh, you know it's it's not it's out of the question now right. but uh, but uh, there are there are uh, uh, other outcomes that have come out of it which is the teachers have taken to technology they have tried to embrace it there was a lot of uh, you know how do i say uh, difficulty for a lot of them to understand how the how things simple things as how to record your lectures or what tools to use etc i think a lot of people within uh within this time of uh, lockdown have actually enhanced their skills as teachers uh and i think this is the feedback that i've got 
from most of our teachers that it has been very helpful to them to learn new methods and techniques as much as the student is learning to uh, to to embrace the situation i think the teachers are also doing a great job in doing this um as far as the as far as this uh, lockdown is concerned how uh, what's the future and how does it go the future to me is uh, aditya for me i i i'm 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 all for digital i think uh, you know me for a long time people who do know who do know me uh, know that i'm uh, uh, i'm an advent user of digital tools uh, in teaching but i also uh, acknowledge uh, that there is uh, there's a lot of things to be learned before getting to it completely uh, the the university life of a student um, i was just speaking to one of us uh, one of the students and uh, he was telling me something very interesting which uh, said uh, said so i have uh, i enjoy the online classes and everything but i miss being with my friends in class i miss i miss practicing uh, for some cultural activity that is going to be there for next in the next day or the next week uh, which was which was ways that was building that person's personality as well i think these uh, with these uh, you know being confined in a way to just uh, your houses all these kind of uh, you know uh, intrinsic learning of students is lost so i'm 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 a little i'm a little uh, you know torn to say that digital is uh, the only way but i so think i'm going to it is sorry. definitely i'm going to cut sure. in here and yeah. so basically uh, whether regardless of what journey of your academic career you're in you might be in school yeah. you could be in pre university you could be in undergrad you could be doing a post grad um that whole physical relationship or the whole physical aspect of being in a campus right yeah. like you would like this example of the student in an extra curricular activity or practicing for all these things yeah. if and yeah. when uh, these kind of things do come back it's going to be really difficult with uh, physical distancing gloves sanitization so um uh, especially for larger campuses have- so so uh i think till may may said everything is shut uh, i think no educational institutions i think uh, in bangalore uh, yesterday it was relaxed a bit uh, but that's just for the you know essential working stuff but for educational institutions it's still shut and um i do see that uh, prolonged as well i don't see it uh, immediately open uh, so it, so most of the learning or teachings that are happening will happen digitally uh, we are doing our level best to reach out to all our students um, i won't say that we have done 100% because there is still a big problem with uh, internet connectivity in india whether we like it or not uh, we are just talking about this urban set of classes but there's a huge digital divide which i'm sure we'll get into a little uh, more later but sure. um, we have tried we have tried our level best to make sure that uh, the the classes are captured short whatsapp messages are sent to students on videos lecture notes are sent to them so that there's a constant learning exercise uh, there's also a plethora of uh, knowledge that's available on the world wide web uh, on youtube videos and many other things which uh, students can use at this time so teachers have become like uh, people who will collate all these informations in a right structured way to give it to students uh, so it's easier for them to consume those knowledge trusting but yeah in universities it is going to be a challenge though it is going to be yeah. a challenge and something I that think, uh, i think that way when you look at karnataka and bengaluru we seem to be like the one of the biggest one of the largest uh congregations of students from around the world right i mean your campus too your campus especially has students from different parts of the world different parts of the country so now with covid-19 there are lots of interesting challenges where now that a lot of uh the population in the big urban cities have ga- gone back home uh going forward do you see these uh do you see these children coming back 
to cities like Bangalore or are they going to start looking for education spaces in their respective cities? Um, I think to answer this, Aditya, I think, I think we, we all should agree one thing, that the student safety uh, is yes. paramount. Sure. Uh, I mean, all our safety is paramount. Uh, and without, if, uh, I mean, looking at how it is going right now, uh, just, uh, I think it was one person found in one location uh, that uh, was positive and pretty much the entire area was red zone. Uh, so it just takes one uh, small mishap or one unfortunate situation for a lot of uh, a lot of people to to you know uh, become subject to this uh, COVID nineteen. The there is there is definitely no easy answer to this because we have to wait and see. But one thing is for sure mm-hmm. is that. Uh, as 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 we are as this world progresses, we are going to have challenges. We are going to have these kind of uh, uh, troubles that are going to come up. It's about how we can sustain ourselves, and the life cycle continues on. And as we say that the COVID nineteen has come, there will be a point where the COVID nineteen would go as well. Uh, I'm an optimistic in I'm op- optimistic in that sense. But um, as of now, we do see that we'll see a lot more regional-centric uh, educational institutions. Uh, okay. A lot more people uh, within their region going into educational institutions or educational institutions uh, as such opening up uh, their campuses or short campuses uh, in different parts of uh, the country where there is, um, you know, where the education is, uh, sector is pretty much nil. So I see that that way uh, there could be another revolution of education happening. We won't see these mega campuses. Rather, we'll see all these small, small campuses uh, in, in every region where students can, uh, will take up those campuses instead of traveling, which I, which, which I think is a shame because traveling, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a way of how the students explore and the freedom that they get uh, the freedom they get or misuse or use, whatever it may be, that helps them grow. I think that could be something that uh, would be hindering. A very interesting interesting note on this is that I had got a, a feed to an email from uh, TripAdvisor, which was telling me that I could uh, plan my future trips and they would send me videos of those places. Wow. <laughs> so... So it's it's. So, it, I mean, even even companies are just <laughs> this, doing so, what they so, can. So it looks like travel companies are now switching to uh, virtual reality and sending people yeah. an experience. Yeah, you vicariously live through other videos like uh, all we see all these travel shows that are there. We or all the we, bloggers you know, and the influencers. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. So, you know, uh, on the point that you mentioned in terms of mega campuses disappearing, where, you know, you've got education, where you've got various things, it could be uh, medical colleges, engineering, or generally a a university that has a mix of different things. Um, So obviously, design in designs of classrooms are also going to be affected, designs of hostels, the way things classes are conducted would have to change, right, with the whole social distancing in place. And mm-hmm. as in, as we produce, uh, as, as we go on, there'll be new, new such rules, I guess, from the government and yeah. education systems. True. Um, actually, as I say, I'm doing a short study on this right now to understand, okay. uh, uh, understand what these impacts are, these challenges are, uh, and uh, what I have, what I've learned uh, from my research, uh, which other universities are considering right now. Uh, let me just put certain things into perspective before I tell you this. I think, uh, sure. I think uh, UNESCO has come out with uh, uh, had come out with a survey which said that 91 percent of the global student population is affected by the lockdowns that uh, countries have imposed worldwide. And in India, just in the higher education sector, it's 3.4 crore students that are affected by this. Uh, there's also a huge 
uh, there's also a huge divide uh, between urban and rural. Uh, we all sit in urban cities and uh, we talk about, uh, you know, my internet speed is low or uh, why, am I, why, am I, why am I not being able to go to campuses, etc. But that's not the luxuries that uh, most of India faces. So in, as India is such a huge country, there, is, there, are, there are these huge challenges, especially in the uh, education sector. Uh, to, and we are a young country. Uh, with uh, with more than sixty uh, percent of our population, less than forty years, and these uh, these statistics you are aware of it. So this so universities I think are going to take a shape between a blended form of learning, which is a uh, tech and uh, brick and mortar. I don't believe that the teachers uh, will lose their jobs. None of our uh, none of our teachers or faculty members have. Uh, been um, asked to leave. All the faculty members are there. Their uh, their salaries are being paid. Uh, of course, this this can't go on like this forever unless the government uh, steps in. Uh, as, especially in private, uh, as that as private universities. But there is going to be this uh, blended form of learning with tech uh, technology and uh, brick and mortar, where uh, there would be a lot of uh, you know the flipped method of teaching, which is uh, you would be sent videos and you would be sent uh, you know course materials and learning, and then you would have uh, you would come to universities as places where you will discuss those uh, you know learnings and teachings that are there. So that that I think is going to be a future way, and like I said, regional centers that are going to be open. So I hope uh, I have not uh, I've answered your question. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Uh, you know, on that yeah. note, uh, in terms of um, a lot of tech-based uh, learning, we've had uh, unicorns like Baiju's come out of Bangalore. You've got Upgrad. You've got yeah. so many other platforms that are coming up and doing successfully well. Do you see anything coming up like that on the university level? Uh, I think universities will move into that. But what I do see very encouraging, and I I would like to... Uh, make a statement and acknowledge the fact that all these uh, uh, companies that you had mentioned right now are doing a phenomenal job and they are reaching out to universities actually and giving their platforms and asking them to use it. Of course, it makes business sense, all that, that's true. But um, uh, with the current situation when the, most universities uh, don't have the infrastructure to do online teaching, I think this would be a great tool for them. And I think kudos to them for doing these things. Um, we at Garden City University, we have, I mean, one thing that we have just done is we have, uh, we have Coursera on board with us, which is, oh, uh, which, which, which has uh, more than 32,000 course. Uh, I mean, there's more than 3,200 courses for students can, that can take it up. And uh, we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, give them some credits for these courses that these students can take and they can get these certificates. Uh, universities will have their own establishments, I think. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a competition that is there because it's a completely different uh, way of uh, doing things. We, we are an authority or we can say we are a statutory board. It's a, a, it's, it's a stamp, a university stamp is because there's a lot of people involved. There are boards that are involved. Uh, any course that comes through goes through a lot of scrutiny. Uh, it's it's not just made um, out of uh, uh, you know out of the sky. It's just pulled out like this. There's board of studies involved. There's a board of management. There's academic councils that are involved. There's ex subject experts that are involved. There's industry and academia connect that is involved. So it's it's a process, and that's why universities have its own charm. And I don't think that will be that will go away. It will just have to readapt and realign to what's yes, happening. Yes, as as I told you, there will be there will be a blended form of learning, uh, which I, which which I think is post COVID. I mean, uh, I mean post maybe May, or whenever they uh, they lift the lockdown, I think most teachers will be uh, will be taking up this uh, more seriously. Uh, 
Do you, we had do you already think... started this. Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. So we had we had already started this. I think uh, our teachers uh, were uh, a little more equipped. Uh, may not be all of them, but most of our teachers were already equipped by these uh, trainings. But um, I think this this is what uh, we we as a university also as a part of our social mission is we 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 are going to be reaching out to educational institutions, small government colleges, and institutions which uh, may not have these expertise, and we will be going and um, you know giving them classes on how to be done. Our teachers would be going and helping them execute this online blended form of learning. Interesting. So you know, um, in, interestingly, this is the first time I believe uh, since um, World War Two that uh, educational institutions and businesses around the world are shut at the same time, and then students and parents are left in the lurch. Also, on the other side, um, universities such as yours, teachers, the entire system, the entire education system seems to have come to a churning halt. Um, so. Um, what are your thoughts about it i mean we kind of spoke to, about parts of it earlier but then globally for everything to come to a standstill and then also we're noticing a lot of reports across the mainstream media about uh, students who've gone abroad and forked out a fortune to go study at the best ivy league colleges and you spend i don't know a couple of million dollars or so on the fee and then a month later you're back here and studying in chandigarh or bangalore University of Rome. Yeah, um, it's true. Uh, it, uh, I mean, it is a crisis, and uh, it, it. I mean, it's a global pandemic. Uh, we hope that it does not come through. And uh, I think many. There were. Uh, I mean, I have. Uh, I think it was about uh, a few months back. I had seen this tech talk about uh, Bill Gates talking about this. Uh, you know. Uh, biggest threat to the world is not war, but uh, one of these viruses that are going to be, uh, you know, at which we are not ready uh, to face. Um, I mean, he was called an alarmist at that time, but I think we we all understand it now that how important it is: uh, freedom, freedom of movement, freedom of uh, just the going when you want to go. You know. These uh, these kind of things uh, are are essentials for human beings, and I think uh, rather sooner or later we will get back to those normalcies. We will get uh, uh, we will have students come to universities and things like that. But um, I, as far as foreign, I think there are a lot of people do ask me about uh, how do I apply to foreign universities or um, how is can I still apply to it? Um, will they take home? What can happen to my TOEFL and GMAT and etc. All these tests. So I think uh, there is there has been um, uh, most universities around the world have uh, foregone with uh, taking GMAT or uh, TOEFL. There are only few institutions that are still, um, you know, insisting that they want. That is point number one. Point number two is uh, you are going to go. Uh, I don't. Uh, all these universities are still taking applications. They're still uh, uh, they're, they're just putting it to you on uh, on a waiting list. And uh, they they are also unsure if. Uh, you know the classes would be online, or if they would be something that, uh, if countries open up their borders and students can travel. Uh, but you must also understand that there are most of these students who do uh, try and go abroad are not just going there for that education; they're actually going there for the environment. Right, they're actually and the going there for that. New country, exactly. a new place to travel. Exactly. Ed the education, I believe, is there's nothing different. I think some of our teachers here are excellent. Mm -hmm. Way better than most uh, most other foreign lecturers that are there. Uh, okay. I think we do. We have some phenomenal teachers here. Uh, there's the I think uh, two days back there was a meeting of vice chancellors uh, in the UK, uh, and they were discussing on because uh, foreign students are one of the biggest cash cows uh, that the universities has. 
um, more than 90% of the you know their spending comes from international students so, so they so when that they kind of dies up exactly it completely dies up now uh, and uh, they are also acknowledging this fact very interestingly there was one vice chancellor uh, i cannot remember which university he was exactly but he made a very important point and he said that uh, uh, western universities are thought out like luxury brands where the prices are uh, you know skies uh, j- are in the state uh, yeah prices are sky high and on just the name of the brand but when people look into the product quality there's no intrinsic value to it so yep. people are just people are just going there for that brand but the product there's no there's no differentiation of intrinsic value so okay. uh, they do see this and there's a huge uh, you know a lot of people who are dropping off mm-hmm. my suggestion to anyone who is applying uh, to foreign universities is uh, uh, there's nothing wrong in applying to universities abroad please do apply for it uh i would suggest you do it yourself you don't need a third party to do it that's one thing i've always told everyone okay. and uh and and then and then and then the next thing is uh, i would suggest that you apply to indian institutions as well because uh, that would be a way for you not to waste your time and you would also have uh, you would also have a place to uh, go and learn here and i don't i truly do believe that uh, there are the educational institutions in india uh, that are doing exceptionally well and and is part to any world class university may not be infrastructure wise but in terms of knowledge yes um another interesting note since most universities uh, are also the nurturing ground for athletes now that the olympics has also been postponed and you've got yeah. the best of the world athletes just stuck at home indoors if they ha- if they have the equipment and they sort of working out but then when you see athletes uh, going forward along with yeah. the university program uh as yeah there's uh, you know uh, there was a meeting with the mhhrd uh, there was a circular from the mhhrd the ministry of human resource and also there was a meeting uh, held by the education minister in karnataka one of the oh, of course we we spoke about academic calendar all these kind of things but one thing that was uh, really interesting and uh, uh, what was spot which was spot on i think most institutions have not yet taken to it is that uh, the psychological uh, confidence that uh, the or the psychological pastoral uh, you know uh, service that is given to these students uh, the when when i was um, this 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 uh, you know there's a lot of people who are uh, maybe feeling the uh, you know the pressures of online learning where they cannot some of them cannot access it and all this so they are they are challenged psychologically and uh, many uh, many institutions even ours we have some um, helpline for them and we also have some of our teachers to assist them in this uh, and this is the same case that happens to sportsmen as well is that they they their their routine starts at maybe 5 or 4 o'clock uh, playing cricket or football whichever the game that may be uh, and uh, when it's completely stand still now uh, they they have a confined place to do their exercise they i think most of them uh, will have to start working on their um, you know their mental health the confidence um, catch up on you know uh, uh, on on other life skills that they can during this period um, that's i think that is what uh, that's that's the best advice that uh, i can give and this is the best advice i have also uh, heard from experts that are doing right now yeah right um and do you have any psychological advice for people currently sitting at home i've lost track is it week 5 week or week 6 <laughs> of sitting at home okay yeah any um, tips any tips from the educational sector or just from you with your vast educational background <laughs> no uh, uh my my tip is very simple my tip is uh, do uh, take take rest as much as you can uh, use this time to uh, 
to learn, you know, watch videos, documentaries, uh, spend time with family, pick up new skills. Um, there are multiple things that uh, you can learn online, which you, I mean, there's, there's so much content that's available. Um, I would suggest uh, take up things like uh, which you thought, uh, you know, you, which was a bit far-fetched, which is maybe start a YouTube channel or uh, pick up drawing as a class in painting, all these kind of things. Keep yourself, keep yourself engaged, your mind engaged. And of course, uh, eat healthily. And the, I mean, these things, these things I think is said uh, vastly. As far as, as far as, uh, you know, keeping yourself engaged uh, with education is that you can take up courses. I would suggest everyone to take up some kind of courses online. Um, anything, it could be anything, artificial intelligence, uh, speaking, writing, learn a new language. I would suggest you to do it. And that would, that's one way of how you can uh, keep yourself engaged and talk to friends. Talk to friends yeah, every day. For sure. Uh, like, have, like, yeah, like what I mean, we're currently doing. Exactly. It's it's like what we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so talk to friends. Uh, you know, tell them what you learned. Uh, I, I know some people may think it's absurd, but I think that's the best way when you can uh, speak to your friends and you can tell them that what you have learned and they, uh, you know, respond back to you. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a moral boost that you can get in this video. Nice. Um, have you picked up any skills during the lockdown so far? Have you tried your hand at painting? I do believe yeah, you tried painting I've, a couple of times. Yes, I have. Uh, I do have a diploma in painting from Chitipala Parishya. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it is, it is a certificate that I hold. But uh, yes, I do, I do paint, uh, I mean, not as regularly as I used to. But uh, right now, I'm busy working on a project uh, for my PhD work in Lancaster. And of course, uh, there's, there's so many things that are happening with the university. Uh, we've, uh, so we have a great team uh, with us. Um, of course, I'm, I'm just a part of that team, uh, led by our chancellor. Uh, you know, he, he's like a guiding light to all of us. So uh, take his advice to try and implement things. And right. uh, try and try and try and make sure that we are on the same right track. And the most important thing is the students here, and we make sure that the students get the best out of it. It doesn't. Okay. It, it it doesn't matter which technological tool you use, as long as it is helpful for the student. We just we get it done. Nice. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we take uh, questions? Uh my as an uh, i i'll just i'll just say this that you know this lockdown is 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 a wake up call to many educational institutions i think uh, we as educators or people who are wanting to be in the education sector uh, it's it's very interesting time and period for all of us to reevaluate where we stand and uh, how to take things forward um, it, it's challenging times, but I think there's there's also opportunities to help students and to help the country in general to to uplift uh, the the youth of our country. I think there is there's there's a huge opportunity in the education sector. With this. I think I'll leave it. Okay, great. Um, oh, actually, there was a point when we started off that I just remembered. Uh, we were talking yeah. about uh, the huge divide. Uh, oh, yeah. on, on the digital divide. That even digitally, there seems to be a divide happening, which is rather strange. Um, you know, with accessible internet, with 4G connection, with Geo coming in, Airtel also picked up. At, I mean, I'm currently on Airtel and it seems to be pretty good for now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, the digital divide in education seems to be alarmingly fast and it's growing at a pretty fast rate because in certain parts, uh, in certain rural parts of the country, you have barely a any internet connectivity. There are no devices. And even if you'd like to store things on devices, you need hard drives. You need multiple things. 
uh, what do you think about that and do you do you have any solutions for it um it is it is it is uh, it is it's a it's a great challenge uh, for india in general um especially when we have this kind of pandemic that is hit um i think it was a uh, in there was a report in 2019 which said that there was only 36% uh, internet penetration in india and uh, there's a huge uh, urban and rural divide and uh, even in there we could see that uh, even in the rural sector there's there's more male uh, domination of uh, the usage of internet and there's very few female um, uh, users there's uh, there's cases uh, that we are seeing right now we have students from all over india and i think there there are there are instances uh, where um, some of them can't get network you know it's uh, it was funnily enough i was uh, one of the student mentioned that i have 4g it says 4g but there's, but there's nothing no there's no g that that's a no g so it, it it's like it's like uh, you know that that itself is also deceptive in a lot of ways uh, sure. but 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 yes there is this huge divide we sitting in the urban uh, cities uh, it is a luxury for us that we have uh, i mean or rather we take it for granted that we have it and uh, for uh, for that sector i think uh, geo is moving a lot in that and uh, they say that we will be getting we are the second ha- largest users of uh, internet in the world after china uh, we we will we will soon hit the more than a billion people is what they're saying uh, that that's the geo vision but until then until then uh, there is there has to be other ways and means that we have to look so i uh, i say tech solution low tech solution and no tech solution these are the three things that uh, as educators we need to look into it tech solution of course we have a low tech solution we make sure that even with the low bandwidth we do it no tech solutions which are uh, which has already taken shape in certain places in africa where they have taken community leaders in uh, villages and they've uh, they've asked them to act as teachers to teach life skills to students at this point of time especially for uh, primary and secondary uh, school uh, children so yeah, I, think, there, uh, i think in india we definitely need more life skills yeah well, i mean that that is, again that's another aspect of what university brings you know uh, it's that uh, it's that space where the students can come in and learn a lot of things uh, by looking at their peers how they handle themselves uh, you know we are we we are social beings at the end of the day we cannot be confined to this digital uh, uh, medium for long we uh, i think there will be a there will be a time where we will say that they look uh, we need to we need to figure out more place, uh, more uh, you know ideas of how we can maintain social distancing and yet uh, we need up physically right yeah. and I, and and i think uh, on that note um i think obviously um low i mean great um or uh, affordable education at low uh, data speeds is bound to somehow come i yes in 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 future i do think that the um, education is going to uh, is going to be free for all um and it should uh, i'm also a believer for that uh, there would be certain points where uh, education uh, and education sectors can take uh, the government can initiate certain things take uh, take the private uh, institutions uh, into confidence and uh, get i think i think the government is also working on those lines there there will be there will be a time aditya Uh, i think in our uh, lifetime itself where we okay, see that higher education is is going to be something that is uh, universal for all right. indians just like how uh, primary and secondary education is interesting yeah what's up and um great um would you like to answer some questions that we've got yeah please 
please okay. any any questions that are there we more than happy to okay see dr azur um Okay, there's Percy Andrews. Few okay. universities have plans of conducting online semester exams. What's your comment on that? Okay, um, he's right to the point. Uh, and there are we are going to. Let me tell you that there is uh, the NTA National Testing Agency. Uh, which okay. are uh, which the government is working on right now from the MHHRD, uh, okay. which is looking at how to take up these NEET and JEE exams and all these, you know, competitive okay. exams that are there. All right. That that also people are looking into it. Uh, okay. We we are also uh, developing our own system of uh, how online education uh, online uh, exams can be taken by okay. the use of uh, by by the use of uh, you know into um, webcams to be on when they are taking the test and there's there's certain uh, technological tools that can be used we are also on it uh, i think you can uh, i think there will be there will be more exams that will be taken online there will be less of descriptive uh, questions and those descriptive questions uh, which normally used to have would change into assignments and uh, would change into ways uh, where they can write a report so there'll be alternative you know exam solutions that will come through so okay. as before e- examination the you know paper and pen examination uh, which uh, the that uh, that mindset would change mm-hmm. okay and other alternative example for example for me uh, mm-hmm. where i i studied uh, in king's college and okay. uh, we had we just had i just had one or two papers that were exam based otherwise okay. all my exams were uh, uh, research oriented or were uh, you know report based or assessment based assignment based okay interesting we, so we we have we have challenges on plagiarism and things like that but i think universities are coming out of it more there's there's more people that are getting uh, you know educated about such things nice so sachin sachin has a question i have yes how wait how about how about the institutions that don't that are that are not technological advanced oh yeah um like i mentioned to you uh, small things that we we are planning to do right now is we we have we we are ready to help with other institutions that are um, that do not have this, this capacity of learning so okay we need to we need to we need to divide this into two one is the network connectivity that is something that is not in our hands but we okay. can we try and help but if it is uh, how to get it done how online education can happen how right. we can make it more interactive those okay. things are something that we uh, we would be helping institutions to uh, uh, people who come towards us to help them uh, educate them on the practice that we do okay first thing and um any i can't hear you as it is hello i'm sorry i believe atel just let me down oh he is i was just praising atel and then boom the network disappeared 
So we we All got right. a small effect of what students face. Thank you, Christo, day. for being. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Christo, for your time, and thank you for being on the Good City Show. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you. I wish you all the best and with the Good City, you can, you, and you're doing you a can, phenomenal job. Thank you. You can find more about Christo at christojoseph dot in and Garden City University. And they 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 can you can you can give them my email address as well if you have any queries do, related do you to type it education. Out? Do you want to type it out yeah. below? Sure, sure. I'll right. I'll I'll do it as soon as I finish this. Okay. And. And you can reach out to me at any time. It's uh, so. Why did you just read out is, what your email is? It's, yeah, it's Christo C H R I S T O dot Joseph J O S E P H at Garden City dot University. I'll repeat that once more. Christo C H R I S T O dot Joseph J O S E P H at Garden City dot University. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. More than welcome to drop me a mail awesome. and. I'll, I'll do my best to answer any queries that are there. And you can put the Good City Show in the subject, so it filters better. For sure, for sure, I will do that. I will do that. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Join us tomorrow at five o'clock. We have someone very special. Actually, every day is someone very special. Uh, so tune in at five p.m. Also, look for the Good City Show on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, of course. Uh, let us know if you'd like to feature anybody else on the show. Um, really excited. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Alfia. Thank you, everyone.